Hey Thrivers, you're listening to episode number 19. Today we have a guest with us who's an experienced interior designer and works for one of Lancaster's premier flooring and home design stores. Not only does she work with some of the area's best known builders and help individuals with building and remodeling projects of all sizes, she has her very own Etsy shop where she sells beautiful hand-lettered signs and decor. We want to welcome to the Thrive, Miss, soon to be Mrs. Shannon Smith. Welcome to The Thrive, a podcast for working moms. This is for all the women and moms listening. If you work from home, in an office, run your own business, or are the CEO of your family, this podcast is for you. Because at the end of the day, all moms are working moms. Rachel and Christine invite you to celebrate the victories, get advice, listen to their mom fails, and to know you aren't alone, to thrive in your everyday life. Today's episode is brought to you by Three Strands LLC, a female-owned business in Lancaster, PA, that makes finding a trustworthy and reliable babysitter or mother's helper easy. Three Strands' goal is to provide moms with the help you need as you love, take care of, and raise your family. With services to support you through pregnancy, childbirth, and beyond, Three Strands knows we can all use a little support sometimes. Hey guys, this is Rachel and Christine, and today I am very excited to bring you the first guest that is one of my friends <laughs> that's new to Rachel, but it's Shannon Smith. Hi, Shannon. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Shannon is just basically one of the most talented friends I have. Thanks. She um, <laughs> is a designer with, what would you say, a local flooring Yep, company. a local flooring company. Mm -hmm. So she works there full time, but also has an Etsy shop where um, she just posts some of her cuteness up whenever she has time in her very busy life, um, <laughs> which is probably not a lot that you have time to do that. Not recently, yeah. <laughs> but your stuff is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so do you want to explain, Shannon, how we met? Do you know? I would love to know. I've been one yes. We just did an Instagram live, which we do with our guests each week, and I was, like, holding back. I really wanted to ask, like, how the heck you guys know each other. Well, but I figured I'd save it for Because even before Lindsay, it starts with my friend Ashley from college, which is how I met Lindsay. Okay. Did you know that? Okay, no, so I, I went to I school that. at Penn State, and one of my roommates was a dear girl named Ashley. She was from Lampeter, Strasburg, and she had, now lives, like, a little, oh. little bit past York. I was friends with her, and she had a baby shower when I had lived here, and I went to it, and Lindsay was there. Okay. A joint friend, Lindsay, and I knew Lindsay was living here, so I said, oh, Lindsay, we should be friends and hang out. So then we started right, to become friends. Right, because we were new to Lancaster. Okay. Okay, so then yes. you take it from there. So at that, <laughs> at that point in time, or close to that, Lindsay and I started working together. Lindsay started working at Indoor City probably about three months before I started. She was actually the one that got me my job at Indoor City. So oh, we had gone on a trip where I was actually the liaison for a different company that I was working for, met Lindsay. We clicked right away and she said, oh my gosh, you have to work for Indoor City. <laughs> Send your resume right now to Ryan, my boss. Wow. Um, so I literally on that trip, emailed my resume to Ryan and by the end of the week I had an interview and was hired. So Lindsay That's and I so worked cool. together um, <laughs> for, I guess it was probably just a little over a year. Mm. Um, well, longer than that before she moved, but um, yeah. it was just a number of months before she brought us together. And so we would go do trivia. Oh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> Lindsay and then my best friend April and I and then our friend Chelsea, um, we would do trivia together at, what was it called? Uh, well, we did it at Hot Sea. Hot Sea. Hot Sea Pizzas yes, for a while. I know where Hot Sea And then that place was now Arugas, whatever it was, it was called. It the street from me. It yeah, was I can't Greek remember. Mm. Symposium. Symposium. Oh. So we would go, and then Lindsay said, oh, I have another friend of mine that I work with that I want you all to meet, and she's going to come. And so. Mm -hmm. So I came to trivia one night, and mm -hmm. then we just, I mean, it was a weekly thing. Yeah. All of us at the time were single. But I think that was soon before Lindsay was moving to Canada. Yeah. Oh, okay, so she Lindsay didn't just moved like no, to York. No, she, no, she moved away. to Canada. Yeah, we missed <laughs> her long. dearly. Yeah. So, but at the time it was I mean, it was all of us girls just hanging out. It was and a great time. It, it was, was so fun. It was, it was fun. And we won trivia, I think, one time. 
I wasn't there that time. No, we I weren't know. There that I time. wasn't. Yeah, we didn't win a whole lot, but we definitely had a lot of fun. Yeah, playing trivia. So I love trivia. I yeah. If it I was mean, like I'm really bad questions, at questions. I know. I like it, but like I always like to try. Yeah. <laughs> so it was one of those things that you know, Lindsay and I at work, we just hit it off immediately, and she is just one of those people that knows how to bring other people mm-hmm. together. So we always joked that. She was leaving and had to find all of us mm-hmm. a replacement friend. So oh, we were yeah. replacement friends we for were. a while. Like that was that was what we were. Like um, if you're gonna leave, Lindsay. We need we some need new some. Friends. You need to you need to be find some replacements here. Yeah. So Lindsay did her job, and uh, we became replacement friends and have been we friends did. ever since. Oh, that's so um, fun. Yeah. And so in that, like you had said, we were all single or newly single. Day, I, just yeah. like a fun time of life. Yes. Well, maybe well, not as much for yeah, you. That was right when I was going through, <laughs> yeah, I was going through my divorce. So I was actually sort of, I was living with my cousin at the time. I would actually sleep over at your place. Mm-hmm. I was working in Lancaster. Christine was about 10 minutes from my job. So they helped me out tremendously while mm-hmm. I was getting on my feet. Mm-hmm. And um, shortly after that, I bought my condo in Lancaster and, you know, lived in this area now for the last four and a half years. Yeah. That's so cool. So besides that, I feel like God like puts the right people in your life at the right time. And that's, that's I think so. Yeah. It's all about timing. Cause even now, so Lindsay moved to Canada and she, her husband, now husband was from Canada. Um, where in Canada? Over to the west. Coquitlam. Yeah. Coquitlam. Wherever that is. Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Chelsea, moved she was in rochester and now she's so the group has boy she's all over she's all over (laughs) i love watching wherever she's traveling yeah love her adventures um and april's in downingtown but you're here or no westchester yeah um but we still will like text and keep up and Mm -hmm. so that's really nice even though we're all in like different paths in our lives but it's awesome it's yeah a sweet friendship so yes yeah absolutely well, That's how we met. <laughs> I, I know what's funny is that you just talked about how, you know, when you met, you were going through this different phase of life. But when you walked in the door, Christine made a comment about your beautiful ring. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to yeah. see it. So when did you get engaged? So we got engaged uh, just this past Who February. Who did you get engaged to? To my fiancé, Mike. Mike. Yeah. Um, we were actually um, taking a... It wasn't necessarily a spur of the moment trip. I had a work conference out in Vegas, which he works in a similar industry as me. And so he was able to sort of tag along and work a little bit and and um, travel. So from there, the conference ended and we were going to be coming home on a Thursday. And we were like, well, what's the point of coming home on a Thursday to get <laughs> yeah. back to work? So we took a long weekend and went to San Diego and um, he proposed on the beach. So, oh, how romantic. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it's funny because, you know, everybody has their different stories, but it was perfect for us because we had just been in Vegas. I yeah. mean, lots of people could find anywhere. I mean, nice restaurants mm-hmm. on the strip, yeah. wherever to propose. But he waited until we had gotten up. Our One of our favorite things is getting up in the morning to go for a run and finding a local coffee shop. You so, always text me after a run aww. and I'm like, I need to get up and get moving because right. she's already been up for hours. Yeah. He's but a, I do like local coffee shops. Yes. Maybe I could meet you there and just skip the running. <laughs> That's part. right. Yeah. The coffee, I mean, really, the reason is the coffee. So, yeah. mm-hmm. so we got up um, to catch the sunrise. And, yeah, he proposed during our run on the I beach. I love him. You are and we got, and we got coffee. Couple. I just love that. Oh, You're thanks. so sweet together. And that's such a great story, too, to hear that, like, you know, you had a time where obviously things weren't so great. But I feel like for anyone listening, if you were maybe in one of those times, like – Maybe you could be an inspiration to them, but like yeah. there's always something good mm-hmm. that comes from things. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's interesting because when you're going through something tough, it's always kind of a comfort to find the reason why. And I think a mm-hmm. lot of people don't find that. And I, I don't necessarily think you have to find the reason why, but I do think now, yeah. I mean, I think about it all the time, like look what I would have missed out on. Yeah. Oh, things gone differently. So... And you know, I didn't know you in your previous relationship. I just 
saw you obviously after and then now and just to see the vibrancy and the joy in you especially when you and Mike are together or when you talk about him and his son Eli and just mm-hmm. your relationship together it's so sweet and like you said this is the reason and yeah. you were meant to be together yeah it's so, so great to see so that's why I say you know it's like look at everything I could have missed out on yeah so, that's such yeah. a good way of putting it so I have like five questions for you to okay. give people a better <laughs> idea of this Shannon Smith and who she is. My first really serious question: Backstreet Boys or In Sync? Oh my gosh! <sighs> <sighs> I'm gonna say In Sync. Okay, I would okay. say that yeah. was a good answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Backstreet's back. All right, yeah. Backstreet all the way. They're going to tour with the Spice Girls, guys. I know. I need to get tickets. I was oh. never, I was never hardcore one way or the other. I just Maybe loved either. them all, <laughs> and I still, I mean, I still listen to it on Pandora. So <laughs> <laughs> I love me some Backstreet Boys. Yes. So my next question was going to be like coffee or tea, but. I guess oh. just, are you like an everyday coffee kind of girl? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I lived for a number of years in Seattle. So oh. I Isn't that where you're feel from? like, yeah, sort Isn't of. It? My parents, okay. we moved around a lot as, as kids, but I spent most of my, well, high school and college in Washington State and mm-hmm. spent a number of years in Seattle. And I feel like if you can't develop a love for coffee in <laughs> Seattle, then it's just not. For yeah. you, so <laughs> that's a good um, point. Yeah, so I am. I've I've had lots of different coffee throughout my life, but I am a an americano girl, just with a little Black? bit of cream. Okay. No, a little <laughs> bit of cream, no sugar. Um, it's funny because when Mike and I met, our his drink of choice was also an americano, and it was like, look at that. What? Meant, <laughs> meant to be. be. Meant to be. <laughs> No, I think anybody can drink their own style of coffee, but it is convenient <laughs> that he understands my love for Americana. Oh, that's awesome. So. Yeah. My other question was, what did you go to school for? So I went to school, and I have a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Interior Design. So, you know, it's it's funny because not everybody really understands the whole concept of going to design school. I remember mm-hmm. early on mm-hmm. working at one of my first jobs here in Lancaster for a tile distributor, um, I would get people that said, you actually went to school for that? And at the time, it was almost <laughs> insulting. I would think so. Because yeah. people just didn't understand. Like, it's not like you go into classes and you learn to pick out decorative throw pillows and mm-hmm. you learn to pick a pink color out of a swatch. I mean, it's mm-hmm. interior design is much different than decorating. Now, what I do with my job right now is more on what I would call the design and decorating side. It's it's coordinating finishes and materials mm-hmm. and all of that. But there's so much more that goes into the actual design of it. And I worked closely with some of my professors that were architects and, and learned a lot from, from Yeah, that. that's so cool. I feel like that just gives you so much more credibility if you're somebody coming into a store knowing that like the person that you're actually, you know, working with isn't just somebody that's trained in sales. Like you're somebody that's like gone to school for yeah. design yeah. and so you're not just trying to sell them a product you're trying to help them design their home and make it as functional and beautiful as they can exactly and there's a lot of great companies around here um, but what we love at indoor city and what we've really found success with and harness our um you know we most we have males that work with us as well but most of our designers are female so a lot of our girls have um design degrees and backgrounds mm. and we do find that credibility to be so useful to people coming in I mean yeah it's an investment that mm. people are putting into their home new flooring new countertops a new tiled shower uh kitchen backsplash I mean there are things that people spend yeah. a lot of time yeah. dreaming about and saving their money for mm. and they want to make they want to feel confident knowing that what they're picking is going to look good Absolutely. and is going to be what they had envisioned. So I think we have a lot to offer. I know we have a lot to offer um, our clients when well, they And you come even in. helped us in our new home because yeah. your company was working with our builder. And after all was said and done and we were in our home and we would like take a step back and look at everything, my husband kept commenting about how you knew what you were doing oh. because you no. steered me in the right direction yeah. with the things we picked because yeah. we would – sneak into our house before it oh, was everybody <laughs> everybody does like yeah 
like my foot was stuck in the mud. I'm trying to like maneuver my way. I have to take my shoes off in January. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, it was intense, but all of that to get into our home and see it as the, like it was coming together. And at first the flooring worried me because I was like, is this all going to match? Or like the vinyl with the carpet. Mm -hmm. But then after it was all done, I was like, oh, Shannon knows her stuff. Like this looks good. Like flooring in your home is beautiful. Like I love the dark and like, I mean, I have so many ideas on my Pinterest boards for my <laughs> for future home projects. one day. Yes. yes. Well, and before we get more into what exactly you do, I want to ask if you always saw yourself doing this. Was this a dream you had when you were little? Like, what got you into this? It's so funny. Yeah. I um, I used to torment my mom um, very frequently about moving the furniture around in my room. Oh. <laughs> As a child. I mean, I couldn't move my bed and my dresser, and she, you know, just she put up with it and helped. She was always very creative. My grandfather um, was always so creative and I, I got my creativity from, from them. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the amount of times we moved that furniture around in all of my bedrooms, (laughs) God bless her. (laughs) Um, And, you know, through high school, I always, you know, at that time when I was in, you know, probably freshman in high school, trading spaces was like the thing. And I was was like, I could be on that show. I want to be on that show. You know, obviously, like that is like the last thing I would want to do right now. But (laughs) at the time, it was always something that I loved and I loved being creative. And it got to a point where I sort of realized, like, I could go to school for this. I could Mm -hmm. do this for a living. And I actually was on track to become an ultrasound technician. Um, I had gone to freshman year of college thinking I might be a teacher and I had picked a school because (laughs) I liked the dorm rooms and I just never had a clear path of what I wanted to do. So I took, you know, common core Mm -hmm. classes, freshman year classes Mm -hmm. that you'd have to take anywhere to get a bachelor's degree transferred to a school to Seattle University my sophomore year with took classes over the summer to get on track to do ultrasound tech and some some things You're led like me all over. I, I trust love me. It. yeah <laughs> You're like, like yeah this is all I new to you I know <laughs> I didn't know about that yeah stuff. so um I had taken these I mean and who wants to take classes over the summer like, after freshman year of college I did that because it was, I had to it was t- <laughs> I know well it was county yeah. college Tag summer school here I come <laughs> biology no that's what I took yeah so I took county. I took the, the <laughs> classes to get into um anatomy and physiology and I met with my counselor got my schedule set up went through my fall quarter at Seattle University went to sign up for winter classes and learned that you can only take anatomy and physiology um, fall and winter and they never told me that never put me in in the fall so I was gonna have to wait an entire year so I was like this sucks forget about this. <laughs> that was the first yeah. thing and really I mean yeah I think about how I made decisions back then and I'm thankful for it, but it's like, gosh, I yeah. so overthink things now because at the time I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out a different path. Right. And so I took, um, I was already registered for winter classes, took winter classes, took spring off. And by the summer I was in design school and never really looked back. I mean, That's I'm awesome. thankful because most people that would probably say, yeah, I'm going to transfer from Seattle university and go to the art Institute and pursue design their parents would be like no stay in school (laughs) my parents are like what can we do to help you get there you know so so cool yeah so I owe a lot of that to them because I didn't know I didn't know what I wanted to do Mm -hmm. my brother knew from a young age that he wanted to be a doctor and he took every step to become a doctor and he is now a pediatrician and I think that's wonderful but I never had that Mm -hmm. I have to do this and here's the step Mm -hmm. I just kind of evolved and yeah, ended yeah. up where I am now. When well, as a mom myself, something I think about is if I ever have more than one child, how I would parent different children. My brother and I are very different. Mm-hmm. And so I love to hear, obviously, your parents did something different for you than your brother. Like he was on one very set path mm-hmm. and was probably very driven or this is mm-hmm. what I'm going to do when it yeah. happened. And you tried different things and that they were able to encourage both of you is... Yeah. 
So I just good. gave him a few more gray hairs. Yeah, <laughs> it adds to the look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is really cool how they just like they didn't push you one way or the other because mm-hmm. I feel like both of my sisters were very similar. So maybe because my parents had two similar, <laughs> yeah. and then I was like the one that just d- didn't seem to fit, fit the mold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why like they weren't intentionally pushing me a certain way, but they just didn't know yeah. like yeah. how to do it a different way. So, do you think about that with your girls now? That, like, do you actively think about what are their interests? Am I encouraging? Because I feel like you do that, Rachel. Like, I feel like you are really good at that. Yeah, I really try to encourage them to do, like, what they like to do. And, like, they know at a young age. Yeah, and they really really like (laughs) She is so hands on and she is such a climber. She loves everything active that, Mm -hmm. like, she, like, she's happiest when she's at gymnastics. And I don't know where that will take her, but. Kyle and I have already talked about, like, well, if she really wants to stick with it, like, we take her to Prestige, which is a really great place for gymnastics. And there are girls there as young as, like, third, fourth, fifth grade who are there all day and they do cyber school because they're already at, like, high levels where they have to train. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like, I'm not trying to, like, push her. But if that's what's making her happy and that's what she likes to do, then, like, I would be happy to, like, like your parents said, like, how can we help you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it means that for you you're going to do cyber school and your sister's going to do regular school – yeah, I would be happy to do that. I think it's just a matter of kind of taking it day by day and, like, mm-hmm. not being stuck in, like, well, once you say you're going to do this, we're going to yeah. do it. Because, you know, maybe we tried it for a year or something and it you didn't would be work. miserable work. doing ultrasound somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I probably I wouldn't be sitting here. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Who knows what, where I'd be, so. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say now that you're at Indoor City and you are a designer, what is your favorite part about being there? My favorite favorite part of my job is that every day it can can sometimes be my least favorite at times <laughs> every day is totally different every client is different every project mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. different um I don't like doing the same thing over and over and over again so I do think I landed mm. in a career that is suited for my personality in that sense because no two clients and no two projects, no two houses, whether they're the same footprint or something different are Mm -hmm. ever the same. Right. So it's, again, that can be part of the struggle, but it's also, Mm -hmm. it's also one of the most fun things about it. Do people come in a lot with an idea of what they want? And is that better than people that have no clue and you have to like piece together this crazy puzzle? Um, both are, again, both are very different. So the person that comes in that has no idea what they're looking for is usually a little more difficult because there are so many options Mm -hmm. with what we do. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of options of tile you know like, you want to if are you want to do like easier though because they're just like willing to go with your suggestions compared Certain to ones. like I feel like I've gone through this design thing with my in-laws recently because <laughs> they did all these renovations to yeah. their beach home which turned out beautifully but like my father-in-law will get an idea in his head and like he is like <laughs> Like tunnel vision. Yeah. He's like impossible to sway, even if it's a terrible idea. Yeah. So, so I is. feel like it could maybe be either or. Because if you're working with somebody like my father in law, God bless him, he's a great man. But when it comes to his home ideas, it's like, why right. did you bring me along to give my opinion? Right. Well, you already knew that you wanted this yeah. color. And and this you're there yeah. just to encourage his decision. Yes. Yeah. Like, they literally asked if, like, I wanted to bring the girls down to the, the beach house with them the one day because the contractor was coming over to go over, like, details and colors and things. Yeah. And it was, that's what happened. I was like, <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because those people, let's put them in a group that have no idea what they want. You can break though that down into the people that are willing to listen and really just want mm-hmm. the input from somebody who's done it before. And then there's a person that doesn't know what they want, but they don't want to listen to you. They just want to, <laughs> but they still don't know what they want. So those people yeah. are definitely more difficult to mm-hmm. help. And really, you know, I have my own personal style and that is my own thing. And mm-hmm. I don't push that on anybody. And so part of the struggle is finding out what their style is. And Mm -hmm. if they're at least willing to share some things that let you in a little bit on that, then you're able to start helping them. So it sort of evolves. Mm -hmm. Once you can find, 
you know, something that they gravitate towards or a color that they like or something Mm. actually better that they don't like, Mm. you can really start to guide them and make some progress. But yeah, it's definitely more difficult some days than others. And with certain people, some people come in, they know exactly what they want or an idea and you show them a few things and they love it. And yeah, you know, it just moves right along. (laughs) Those are fewer and far between. (laughs) I feel like that's a really good piece of advice if someone was going in for them to look at what they don't like. Because I that makes total sense to me that that would really help you. Yeah. Well, Well, I was going to ask, not to interrupt. Yeah. I wanted to ask, like my hairstylist always says, bring a picture. Like I was thinking hair of salon- like hair salons. Yeah, too. like hair salons. A lot of times will just be like, show me a picture of what you're yes. looking for. Especially like for bridal stuff, for updos, they want to see like and what then, you like. Yeah. So do you do that for like the indoor city stuff? Do you yes. tell people like put a put a picture board <laughs> together or like what are some of your like? Absolutely. So if you are thinking about doing any kind of project, whether it is. A whole house and you're going to be building or you're just doing, you know, a little bathroom refresh or a kitchen backsplash. If you have all the ideas or no ideas at all, definitely go onto Pinterest or onto a website called House, H-O-U-Z-Z dot com. Mm-hmm. Um, you can be completely overwhelmed with ideas. And what I tell people is get on there. Don't fall into the downward spiral of spending hours and hours on there because it can be overwhelming. But if you type in kitchen backsplash tile or whatever you're looking for, you will find thousands of pictures. Mm -hmm. And create a board and start saving anything in there that you like. You might look at a picture and say, Mm -hmm. these two pictures are not alike at all. Why do I like this one? And I still like this one. They might be two completely different styles. But there's been a lot of times where I will look through 20 to 25 pictures that somebody has saved. Say we're doing a bathroom and it's like, well, okay, so your color schemes are all over the place. We'll have to hone in on that. (laughs) But you might notice that they're all large format tiles. Or a particular yeah. so like shape. You could see so they're that well, someone else made on mm-hmm. yeah. too. Yeah, well, and I think when you're just browsing, you don't want to yeah. focus in so much on those details. You want to just find things that bring you joy or mm. or excite you about a picture. Dump it in there, and then even for yourself, you can look back and see if there are any reoccurring trends. Mm-hmm. Some most That's of the time there are. Sometimes there's like not. <laughs> and but again, you know, it's it's a starting place, and at least it opens up the conversation for. Well, what do you like about this? What do you not mm. like about this? Yeah. Um, and we have so many options that I can look at a picture and say, well, I have something very similar to that. Let me show you this. Yeah. And we can use it as like a jumping off point. So definitely those websites, Pinterest, House, um, you know, just things on the internet, those inspiration pictures are a huge benefit when you're starting a project. The life of a mom is busy. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom needing an afternoon on your own, a working mom with business to take care of, or you just need some help juggling your kids, school, and activities, we can all use support. And since I'm not originally from this area, I was a little nervous at first to find childcare. I called Three Strands and they immediately connected me with a responsible mother's helper. My sitter came to watch Nora while I ran errands and did some work for my event planning business. I came back to a happy sleeping baby, folded laundry, a clean playroom, and dishes put away. To know that Nora was being well taken care of by a trained and professional helper was invaluable. And moms, isn't that what we want when we can't be the ones with our babies? Three Strands LLC wants all moms to know that you're not alone, that you have support and encouragement as you journey through motherhood. This includes being with you before, during, and after the arrival of your precious child. Three Strands offers doula services, postpartum doula services, mother's helpers, babysitters, placenta encapsulation, and birth classes. Raising a child definitely takes a village, and Three Strands is here to be your village. Visit 3-strandsllc.com to learn more. Oh, that's really helpful. It is. I was going to ask, as a designer, and you mentioned um, that you've gone on some business trips and things for design, so you're probably, like, up to date on, like, the latest trends and things. So is there something that, like, <laughs> don't, why are you, like, psyching me out, like, no, I'm excited <laughs> to hear what she says, because then I want to, I, oh. do you think you are up to date on the trends? I'm somewhat. I, I mean, I was just going to ask, yeah. like, are there any, is there anything that, like, design-wise, you would just tell a client, like, oh my gosh, don't do that? <laughs> Not necessarily. Now, you have to keep in mind, we live in Lancaster County. So 
you know, some of these things, one of the most recent, the one in February that we were out in Vegas was um, basically a convention of all these different manufacturers of products showcasing Mm -hmm. new stuff that's coming out. So Mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see, but there are products that will only hit the market in California this year and probably will not trickle their way down to Lancaster, Pennsylvania for (laughs) a year or three. I mean, there are different, there's definitely different design trends for different regions and we're much more traditional around here. Not that you don't get them, somebody that wants something contemporary Mm -hmm. or a little bit of a modern flair or something a little different. Um, So as far as that goes, I mean, our manufacturers of products are introducing new things all the time. So Mm -hmm. we're always up to date with what our suppliers are offering. Uh, It just doesn't always take hold um, in, you know, more of a conservative (laughs) area. But then you're like, but then here's everything else you might want to pick. Yeah. Well, I I feel like just driving around this area, I mean, it is traditional. Every other house is like tan or gray. Just look at the outside of homes. I love going down to like where our beach house is because I love Mm -hmm. that at the shore they use colors yeah. I love like the bright blues and just like even just like a bright colored front door like go for it Rachel yeah. maybe I will one day yeah. I'll come over we someday have- and we'll just paint <laughs> your door yeah. it's no, just paint. we have put way yeah. too much money into our house now that I feel like we're not doing anything else to it yeah and your house looks so good though you've Thank done such you. a good job but I feel like at this point we're just like all right we're either gonna like do like one more thing to just make it our forever home or my yeah. husband would rather just like forget it. Let's we've done all this work. Let's just move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people do struggle with that. I mean, we see a lot of people that you know put their house up and sell it, and they build something new and mm-hmm. and put everything they like into it. And other people that thought about it, but they love where they are, and they yeah. put on an addition, or they mm-hmm. literally do an entire house remodel. Well, and that's it's, kind of what happened yeah. to our house. It was mm-hmm. our house was a flip, which is also common in this area because mm-hmm. there are a lot of great companies out there that can do that kind of thing. But I don't know, we're just stuck between like we want some more space. You need to build another mm-hmm. floor under your house, and uh, under the house, under- over it. Like some people, you'll make it like two stories because you've oh. arranged. Some people, yeah, we will could just, just add another. You know, just add a second floor. It's actually <laughs> from what I've heard because Kyle's all into this. Like his dream job would be to like flip houses or oh, not do so the good. actual work, but he love he loves real estate. Yeah, and I think it is less expensive to build up than to build out a lot of the time. Because if you think about it, like electric, plumbing, you just go up versus like having to dig or go under. I don't really know, actually. I'm making that up. Well, I see this as a but great I life for that you might be in your why. home. <laughs> With a price difference? Yeah. Yeah, who knows? I do like our lot. Like we have a nice big yard. And mm-hmm. in the area that we're in, you don't find that too often. Yeah. Like the yeah. newer homes are are huge and the lots are very small. They are. Look yeah. at my huge yard. Well, it's yeah. big enough for me, but. <laughs> lots are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I grew up having a lot of space. So that's something that, I think that's why I'm more inclined to like, well, let's just fix up our house. Whereas he is more like you. He doesn't care as much about the yard. Like a smaller yard that's less for him to mow. Yeah. yeah. That's probably what he has on his mind. Like, oh, well, the lawn Absolutely. mowing would be easy. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see. So Shannon, what ask you personally, your mm-hmm. fiance has a son. Yes. Right. And so your schedule is like beyond busy, right? Yeah. I feel like every time we try to connect, you're like, I'm here, there, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Tell me what that is like for you to like be in this new family structure and balancing all of this. Yeah. yeah. Like, a, like a stepmom. Yeah. What's this like? So, I mean, I... I don't know how people do it with multiple kids. We have a part-time child with us. You know, we have him every other weekend and a few nights a week after work. And it's a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, we both work a lot of hours. I'm anywhere from 45 to 50 hours a week. And my job is go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And so when we get home, it's, you know, pickups, it's making dinner, it's doing all this stuff. So weeknights are just hectic. Um, But it's, I always say it's better than being bored. I'm, I'm always mm-hmm. been a moving parts person. I'm always better when I'm busy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's really wonderful. We have a good balance. Summer's been um, good. Eli's been out of school. So he's just living it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> he's going on trips and, you know, spending oh, time it. with friends. Oh, and, 
Yeah. yeah, it's been fun. And luckily, there's a lot of support for watching him because mm-hmm. we all work full time. So. Yeah. And I know, like, you're, I mean, I don't know Mike's family, but your family seems so supportive. Like, I know you've done family trips and they've come and visited and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm well, sure that makes it easier. My parents are, they just adore him. Yeah. You know, I've known, I've been in Eli's life since he was two. So yeah. it's it's been a long time that he's been a part of my life and a part of their life as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not all families are like this, but, you know, my family is so supportive and they look at him as their grandchild. Mm-hmm. They just adore him. And it's hard because they do live so far away, but we do make trips we plan trips and they make trips home and yeah. get to spend time with us when when we're able to get together so That's cool. yeah and do you feel like you're still like you come into seasons of adjustment as he gets older or as things like I mean now with a, you know a marriage coming up do you feel like you're oh yeah continually having adjustments it's always yeah it's always adjustments I mean at every age I mean when I met him he was two he was in diapers you know Mm. Mike had to translate what he was saying (laughs) because what you can't understand a Mm two-year-old they just babble but if you're around him enough you start to understand their own secret language (laughs) and so it's it's definitely an adjustment you know Mm. it's nice because um I've said this a number of times you know he doesn't really remember life before Mm. me which is which is nice you know I've been a part of his life for such a long time and we do have a really close bond but you know I'm still you know I'm Shannon I'm not mommy I'm not daddy I'm my own separate person in his life and Mm. I think there's something really special about that but there's also you know it's it's a different role Mm -hmm. it's it's a really unique and special role and I wouldn't change it for anything but Mm -hmm. it's you know, there's struggles and there's, you know, it's all good and yeah, happy. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely different. I actually <laughs> wanted to ask, um, because I've never been in your situation, like how long, um, like how long since he had a child already when you started dating? Mm-hmm. So I guess my question is like, how long was it until you met the child? Because I know sometimes when people start dating again, you know, it's, it's different once mm-hmm. you have kids involved. Sure. Yeah. I mean... It was a couple months before uh, that Mike and I were dating before I met Eli. And I think we both were just at that. We 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 started out in sort of that like, oh, I wasn't really looking for this mm-hmm. stage. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of unexpected. And, you know, you want to get to know somebody and make sure that there's at least something there that seems yeah. promising, <laughs> you know. And I think we both felt the same way. He wouldn't have wanted to bring somebody into Eli's life that wasn't going to have the potential mm-hmm. of being around. And, right. you know, on my end, I mean, you it's you don't want to interject yourself into a kid's life when you feel like it's not the right fit. So right. Yeah. it was definitely, um, you know, something that we spent – some time getting to know each other before introducing him into the mix. Mm -hmm. How was that for you when that happened? Yeah, I was going to say, like, well, then what what (laughs) happened? Like, was it weird? Was it overwhelming? Was Um, I mean, I distinctly remember the, I mean, the day that I met him and, you know, I was at Mike's house and he went to pick him up from daycare and I hear this little guy coming up the basement (laughs) steps and I hear this little babbling boy I don't know what he's saying um you know and he just comes in and yeah at the time he doesn't know any better I'm just somebody else that he's seen that day and like you and Mike are both in your adults are like yeah what happened happened? yeah (laughs) Yeah, I mean how terrible would it have been if he was like if he didn't like me or something. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely something you sort of tread lightly for a while because you don't mm-hmm. know. And, you mm-hmm. know, obviously as a kid, especially at that age, you know, you yeah. have young kids too. They can just be like, what the heck? I'm not going to, I don't want to be around somebody. Yeah. You know, they can have freak out moments. They might, mm-hmm. you know. And I feel like two and three year olds have, at least mine, has a lot of attitude and a lot of opinions. So yeah. She would want to know, she yeah. Really know if she didn't like somebody or she's so like, what a weird person. <laughs> right. She's been saying the word weird a lot. Weird. Like, <laughs> weird. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it was definitely a slow progression, but I mean, I, you know, I fell in love with them right away. Mm-hmm. So it's, it was one of those things too where you feel like you guard yourself for a little bit as well. You know, I, 
I fell in love with Eli much quicker than I fell in love with Mike even to a certain extent Yeah, that, you know, how can you not love this precious child that you are able to spend this time with yeah. and who I can totally understand how that would be true. I just have never, I mean, he, I call him my kid, our kid, you know, people it's, it's always been sort of that situation. You know, people yeah. are ask, ask about him and it's like, yeah, our kid, you know, I see him as, mine mm-hmm. and he is in a way you know he's he's my child oh, yeah so and I feel like you had mentioned earlier like all of this your whole life was because of the things that have happened and like it all needed to be this way yeah and I could totally see like in your future people coming into your life in this situation that you'll be able to share wisdom and encouragement because of the mm-hmm. things you've gone through and the way that you and Mike have handled it so well together and yeah. figure things out well like you'll I don't know who but you're gonna be able to help Somebody. people yeah. yeah well hopefully and all I know about this is what I see on Teen Mom with <laughs> and the yeah. way they handle things yeah we, obviously they handle it really well you know. oh, and I they you know stress me out kids. oh my gosh don't eat we can't even go down that <laughs> this, <laughs> this is real life here. good adult decisions well and you know kids these days unfortunately divorce is you know, a very prominent thing. Mm. And I think it's always, and what I've, what has been very beneficial for our relationship, our relationships is that, um, it's, it's all about what's best for Eli. You know, Mm. it's not about our differences. It's not about anything else, but him. And so having that similar vested interest is just Mm -hmm. good for you. It makes it easy. Well, that is so cool. And I love hearing how you just said, like, you fell in love with him. And, like, I just feel like that speaks to, like, what a great stepmom you are. And, like, yeah. Stepmom. I know. Officially in six months. (laughs) I did. I had one more question since you were talking about that. Um, And since you brought up teen mom, I'm all the drama. (laughs) Well, I was just going to ask, how was that then, like, meeting Eli's mom? You know, it's, I think, for looking at it, because I've had, you know, a lot of time to think about (laughs) this situation. And, you know, for anybody, it's going to be hard. But I think, personally, if Eli were my child... And he was spending a lot of time with somebody else, um, you know, with his dad's significant other. You know, I would just want to know that that person, whoever they are, cares tremendously for my kid. And I think that, you know, it's. I can't say it's been hard. I mean, it's not it's not an easy situation because it's not a natural right. thing yeah. that you think you're going to have to deal with. And yeah, it's something it's that's so just, un- yeah, yeah, it's, I it's like un- I'm, yeah. On it's, the flip side, it, it would be weird at first. Yeah. But then I feel like, like you said, after you can digest it, after you can get past right. whatever, like the bitter feelings might be, if there are any, then yeah. I feel like and what you said is so true. Like, I would just want to know that like, right. I mean, I Looking at helps, it like, from that heals side. Things, and then sure. At, at one point, you can say, like, well, you know what? Like, if it has to be this way, then this is mm-hmm. the best way that it can be. Right. Yes. And I think that, you know, her knowing how I am and how mm-hmm. much I care for Eli, you know, I think it's just, you know, made it that mm-hmm. much easier. And I feel like you even, like, in many things in life, if you just acknowledge, like, this is a little weird, this feels weird, and you all see it that way, it maybe right. even makes it easier because you don't have to pretend that this is, like, the most fun yeah, there's part no, of your life. Right. There's, right. there's no handbook on how right. to <laughs> on how to handle, you know, situations with step parents and yeah. real parents and mm-hmm. you know, so yeah, you do just you, do it the best you can. So I just wanted to mention that I once dated someone with a child and it was not as good as everything you just shared. So good job. <laughs> yeah. Shannon well, like Mike. I said, it's <laughs> no two situations are right. ever the same. So, mm-hmm. right, but you're doing a good job. Well, thank so you. So let's just leave it at that. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. I love hearing too that just like the fact that you guys are so intentional about taking your time before meeting yeah. Eli, bringing him into the mix. Because my dear brother in law, I love him, but he's a single dad right now. And sometimes, I don't know, I feel like his daughter, like Maddie, I think he just presents a lot of these girlfriends as like, this is just my friend. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they really only last for a week or two. He just like, (laughs) he's got lots of friends. Yeah. Yeah, Like they haven't, he hasn't had any like,
like long lasting relationships um, yeah. since, since things happened with his ex. But yeah, sometimes I'm like, all right, like maybe like his daughter is a little older. Also, she's like seven. Actually, no, she's probably about the same age. She's six, yeah. six, I think. Mm-hmm. Either way, I think he handles things a little differently. And sometimes I'm like, maybe you should take more time. But I mean, maybe if he's just playing it off as like a casual, like this is just a friend of mine. Right. I don't know. And he's doing probably what feels best and right for him. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's and he's such a important. great dad, which is awesome. Like yeah. he does like put Maddie first. But I feel like, yeah, like you said, there's no handbook. So, I mean, who am I to, who am I to judge? I always just think it's <laughs> you funny you. when Maddie's like, my daddy had a new friend. I'm like, he's you so just like roll friends. your new eyes. Friends. Yes, oh I'm always gosh. like, how long is okay. this one Daddy's a friend. <laughs> um, well, Shannon, before we wrap up here, back to your design. Do you yes. have any good tips or tricks for our listeners? Yes, I do have a couple of things that I would suggest for anyone, whether you're in a house, whether you're in a condo, whether you're in a rental, whether like whatever Rachel, you're putting is. a second floor on exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> We're gonna do this. We're oh gonna my do God. this. This is so good. Can yeah. you put like a fireman pole in it? Just sure. slide from the top. Oh my God. <laughs> Reagan, whatever you want. It. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So my first tip would be to buy good staple pieces. So there's a lot of times where, you know, you look at buying a new couch or you look at buying a new dining table and it's maybe a little bit more than you want to spend, but you need a couch and you need that dining table. And instead of spending the money on sort of a placeholder, Mm -hmm. some of those items are worth just getting what is ultimately going to be that piece that you want. Yeah. Um, And if that means saving up a little and splurging a little bit on those pieces, I think ultimately at the end of the day, those are the pieces that you're going to love the most. That's so smart. Um, And I think that's true. Yeah. So you're giving all of our listeners the green light to go buy that piece they've had their (laughs) eyes on. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like what Mara has said too about clothing. Like stop buying crappy cheap clothes. Yes. And like, you know, get rid of junk and like buy something that's going to last or something that you really like and – yeah. And definitely don't spend outside your means, but, you yeah. know, definitely don't just go out and buy something as a placeholder when you really have your eye on something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so that sort of leads into my second one. Um is designing for you. I have a lot of clients that are doing a project in their home and they say, well, you know, then the next person that might live in my house, I don't know if they'd like this. Oh, you know, yeah. I... There is some validity to (laughs) designing your home. If you have the intention of selling it a few years down the road, that is going to be something that other people like as well. But don't make decisions solely on what you think other people might like down the road. Right. Um, I see it all the time. And I always um, try to recommend to people to get what they want and, you know, work off of their tastes and not somebody else's. And I'm sure you see a lot of people not doing that. Yeah. There's, like I said, there's, you know, everybody has an idea in mind of what they think is going to look good. And that (laughs) might be because they saw it in a magazine or they saw it in someone else's home and that's okay. But make sure that it is what you want and not what somebody else wants. Um, So then my last tip would just be to, um, as far as your decor and items, add a lot of personality into it. Homemade art, we have a scattering of homemade art hanging in our kitchen and around our house. Um, Put up those family photos, like personal keepsakes. So if you personalize your decor, you're going to love your house that much more. I like that. What is your favorite personalized piece that you have in your house? Ah, that's so hard. (laughs) So we have a wall in our kitchen that has um, sort of a collage of different frames. I think we have like 12 frames hanging and they all have something different in it. And I would say 75% of those are like something that we made or something that we saved. Or there's one that Eli did some little water coloring and we sort of like cropped it and put it in a frame and it's been in there. It's been been hanging there since we were in my condo. So, and then we hung it in the new house. Um, So it's really cute. But also we just got a canvas made of bean our dog um it's like one of those pop art prints so it's just yes. like this big face of our dog bean and it's hanging in our hallway and we love it oh, yeah that's so cool that's so somebody neat. would walk in and dog. he's a jack russell yorkie mix so just kind of like a little mm, fluffy so guy that was my last of my so. serious questions cat or dog oh, dogs. i feel like you learn a lot about somebody when you ask them cat or dog yes mm-hmm. yeah dogs 
Dogs all the way. Dogs all the way. Mm, yeah. Cat. But no pets are no coming pets in this here. house. Yeah. You know that. No, thank no you. No dogs? No, because my very good friend in Pittsburgh who has a two-year-old and a dog, she... Just last week, she goes, I am the poster woman for we got a dog, then had a baby, and now the dog's not so great. But their dog is, like, having some trouble and needs yeah. some TLC more well, than they, they can do. give him. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah. I'm such a dog person. <laughs> yeah. And you have He's, like, dog. a member of our family. Oh, yeah. We take him to, like, everywhere. Well, ours <laughs> take I Take him can't. to any park. If, unless it's, like, no dogs allowed, like, he pretty much comes with us. Ours has his own portrait hanging in our house <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> well shannon thank you so much for yeah. spending your evening with us and that's sharing funny. these tips and tricks in your life with us yeah, yeah and i feel like i learned a lot about like just for my home yeah like i love talking to somebody that like actually knows design because i just like <laughs> making pretty pinterest boards but yeah well that's that's all that's a puzzle piece in design. <laughs> so Oh, yeah. One more thing. Can people, do people just go to Indoor City? Like, they show up and are like, hey, I have an idea. I just like to talk to someone. Yeah, they can. Um, if you <laughs> want. Like, or make an appointment. Well, <laughs> we are all, I mean, it is, it's a busy place. Yeah. We are doing lots of projects all the time, and we love when people walk in the door. But you can go to our website, which is www.indoorcity.com, and there is a spot where you can schedule an appointment. We have bios about all of our designers, and um, oh, cool. you can kind of check out their tastes. Uh, there's pictures, so you can see a familiar face when you walk in, and you can schedule an appointment with a particular person from our website. So, oh, that's, no, that's I didn't know you cool. had, like each person's style or their own work up there. Yeah, we kind of have like That's their favorite idea. projects. We have some of their like Pinterest boards linked to the oh, website. Cool. So, um, yeah, you know, you just, we have such a broad range of personalities and design aesthetics mm -hmm. that, you know, you might gravitate towards one person over another. And, and that's, what's great. Cause we have lots of different, um, yeah. Designers. Yeah. I like that. I mean, just from like a, person maybe wanting a designer <laughs> perspective yeah. <laughs> it would yeah. be nice to go and to be like I think this is someone I could work with or like hello oh. and then it even gives you like a talking point you can say like oh I saw your board or this project and like I loved it yeah mm -hmm. so yeah. I feel like that's so great on either end so where can people find you if they would want to get in touch so I do some of my hand lettering as we talked about um and I have a little Etsy shop but I post mostly on my Instagram which is whatthink.co and it's really just sort of a broad range of random wow. pictures and little things that I've doodled and a little design project here and there. Um, so I try to keep it light and fun and, um, you know, whatever sort of inspires me. It's more of a hobby than yeah. anything. But well, I'd love for you to get in touch. And that's fun. And I feel like you need that outlet, especially as a creative person, to just yeah. be able to do and share what you love and what is interesting you in the moment. So. Yeah. Good for you, but definitely check out her Instagram because it's adorable and you're going to want to buy her stuff. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. <laughs> and bring your design questions because I'm sure that you'd be happy to answer those too. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you girls get questions from any of the listeners, you can send them my way. I'd be happy to oh. entertain some questions. We yeah. will do that. We will. Yeah. Most of them might be from us. But but right. <laughs> the listeners want to know. Yeah. Christine C. from <laughs> Landisville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my gosh well thank you so much it yeah. was really fun like yeah, getting to chat tonight and yeah definitely go follow Shannon because she was such a joy to have on the show and in case nobody told you this week you're doing amazing mamas thank you so much for listening today you are a part of a growing community of women moms and business owners who are here to encourage and inspire you can connect with Rachel on Instagram at Rachel Klein Creative or like her Facebook business page for web design and marketing tips. Keep up with Christine and all her latest events at Christine Campbell Events on Instagram. Another way to get involved and be first to hear about upcoming podcast guests and giveaways is to join our email list. You can sign up at rachelkleincreative.com slash the thrive podcast. And if you've enjoyed listening, be sure to write us a review on iTunes so that we can continue encouraging moms and businesswomen each week.